Victoria. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Evolve Mindset podcast. Oh, hey, love. So happy to be here. Connect with you. Thank you. Awesome. Oh, I'm so happy to have you here because I have to say you are my mentor. So it's such a, a bit of an honor to have you on with me. And I feel like it's been a while for me wanting to get you on here, but I don't know why I just haven't really asked. Maybe I was shy. I don't know, but here we are. So I'm very, very honored. Yeah, likewise, I've really enjoyed watching you rising and bringing all these awesome pieces to to socials and to media. It's really amazing. Thank you. I appreciate that. And now that I have you here, um, obviously, I have been um, watching you on your social media, in your courses, and in, in, in the Institute. But I would really love for you to share with the listeners um, what exactly your vision in, is in this world, the purpose of the Institute, and where it's going. For sure. Um, so I have a vision basically just to see Eros uh, integrated into society. And for me, Eros is, um, you know, that spark of aliveness, that um, moment of like having goosebumps or feeling that vulnerability of that opening into more life, basically. And I see that that, you know, that's largely linked to that experience of when, of, of how sexuality works. So for me, sexuality is sort of is a byproduct of that experience of eros coming in like what seeking more life and when we feel those like magnetisms or polarities with other people it's like this opening to be experiencing more of life and when we are kind of hiding away we kind of feel like we you know our natural um you know when we close down from life we kind of shut away from connection basically so it's kind of that opening point to to more of that and I believe that that runs like so deeply inside of our, of our own bodies with ourselves and our own relationship to life. And also just in the world, you know, we see that, um, you know, we see sex is, sex is quite oppressed and quite, um, um, you know, it's been made quite a taboo a topic inside of our society. And my sense is that when we bring it back into this experience of eros and the purity of that energy of just like seeking more life and coming into life, there's a like an easeful place where like sexuality can, can exist inside of our society in a healthy way, rather than in the shadows and push the sides or on the top shelf of magazines or, you know, unspoken about, which is actually creating a lot of um, dis-ease and corruption in our society at the moment. Mm, yeah, it's really beautiful. And I love that you mentioned Eros, because that is something obviously very new to myself and what I've learned specifically from you. And you shared a little bit about it, um, but I would love to share like towards the listeners, can you also consider that sexual energy? Um, so yeah, I, I guess my understanding is, is that there's a, there's Eros, which is kind of a very, um, like the qualities of Eros is not like uh, masculine or feminine or more yang or more yin or, you know, more hot or more cold. It's not like any of those experiences. It's very non-dual in its, in its frequency and its expression. Um, and so for me, the sexuality is the piece that comes after that. So if, like from Eros, it's like this spark of creation, this, um, this desire, this sort of breath into life comes our sexuality, comes our creativity, comes like, um, you know, our, uh, emotion, like it's this kind of outward expression of, of being human basically. Mm, I love that so much. Thank you. And I'd love to know, because I feel like uh, a lot of this stuff can be considered even taboo because of a lot of, I guess, maybe the, the media is per, 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 perpetuating it, the way people share um, are maybe shamed and not allowed to share it within like their family or their possibly their lover is feeling uncomfortable with it. That being said, um, how do you feel it would be, how, how do you think it could be made a lot easier for people to be able to speak to subjects like this and actually be able to embody it a bit more? Hmm. um well I feel like it's the the knowing of these experiences inside of the body like I have a really um clear understanding and I believe you would too I feel like everyone that studies at the institute and studies with this modality that we've created around self-pleasure there's um there's a real like embodied experience inside of myself where I know that feeling of my eros and that feeling of my sexual energy. And I believe that we can move our sexual energy without it being connected to Eros. And that for me is like when we're pushing our sexuality from stress or we're pushing it from 
like trying to be sexy or a certain way that um, we believe that we should be because of what we're reading in the media or how we're thought that how it's like portrayed to us how we should show up as a sexual being Mm. did that answer your question (laughs) a little bit yeah I'm trying to find a good way to word what I'm trying to ask um maybe I'll just share what I'm, I'm trying to lead towards so um obviously with a lot of this stuff being taboo it makes it really difficult for people to actually speak to it or um show it in the media um okay yeah yeah so I guess it's just really tough and like how do we go about it to make it a lot uh, more normal I, I suppose and less taboo yeah I think I've just given you like step one which is like find the embodied experience inside yeah. of yourself and but I think what you're speaking to is more of the expression and the mm. and you know how does it um how do we have it land inside of another person's body from our experience and this is a big piece of what we work with at the institute is like that part of the transmission right So when we are completely deeply embodied inside of ourselves, inside of it, we're not in fear of like, how is this going to show up for somebody else? How is this going to um, be portrayed? It actually sort of lands in a much deeper place inside of us where we're not, um, we're not charged with being misunderstood almost, you know, we're not feeling like, oh man, am I going to be misunderstood if I bring this piece? And when we bring it from that place, it creates, um, uh, a clearer space and what I've noticed inside of these conversations and and you know we can talk about it in sexuality we can talk about it in any um difficult political discussion mm. um there's a sense of or even in a fight with a partner right it's like when we're having a fight with a partner if we're holding back any part of ourselves that's actually a bit annoyed at our partner when we're trying to be compassionate or something it's like that lands like it just comes out of our bodies you know it's just emerging from us all the time mm. Um, And so once we kind of like be with that part of ourselves that is frustrated or be with the part of ourselves that is feeling that we're going to be misunderstood, it creates a pathway to be, to come into deeper expression. So, I mean, again, I'm kind of giving you more of the inner landscape of it, but if I was to say like, how do you bring uh, the conversation into the bigger sphere, my sense would be that you really need to frame exactly what you're doing. So it's almost like when I create a safety in people's minds, of this is what this is, this is what it isn't, it creates a spaciousness for um, for people to go, okay, they've just told me it isn't that, so what is it? And it's like you're basically asking them to come into a, a deeper listening to what it is that you're actually showing up and sharing. Mm. And, it, and it, it's almost interesting as well because it's part of the power of the self-pleasure modality because mm. obviously, you know, the self-pleasure modality is not, um, you know, it's not masturbation. Like masturbation is when we you know, have the, we come to the body and we create um, friction when the body with, to create like pleasure, arousal, orgasm, and like masturbation's over when we've achieved one of those things. And then when we work with um, self-pleasure, what we're looking at is the, uh, the ability to come into the body and allow it just to speak to us. And sometimes that can look like touching the genitals and being naked. And sometimes it looks like there's not very little sexuality experience at all. And yeah, but when you say to someone, okay, I'm going to offer you the space to be in your self-pleasure, instantly all the pieces come up of, you know, this is what this is, regardless of how much you tell them this isn't masturbation and that they don't need to be naked and that they don't need to touch their their genitals. Mm -hmm. And what it creates is it's just like that, the mind not being able to land that piece and then also coming into an embodied experience of like, okay, if I don't have to do that, what is this? Recognizing the parts of themselves that are in contraction it creates this understanding of of where we're feeling the contractions around sexuality in our body. So it's like it's it's interesting kind of um, journey I think to to having people recognize that the 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 sensations in their body can be louder than the thoughts in their head, mm-hmm. and I think that's what happens when we start to communicate this piece of eros versus sexuality. Mm, yeah, no, that's huge and. Mm, lots of pieces there came up and I, I didn't actually write anything down so now I'm kind of annoyed but um yeah I I do really love the piece um where you touch on just really noticing what's going in your body first because it, it really brings us back to like the principle of kind of like bringing it back to yourself you know like like you embody and you want to be the change you want to see in this world that's just what it really reminds me of and it makes a lot of sense you know if you come back to yourself 
and you're really just feeling into um, the discomfort or you're feeling into the joy or whatever it is going on in your body. And then you communicate with your partner or then you communicate with um, your social media platform or whoever it is that you're communicating your sexual experience with or whatever it is, like you mentioned, it could be with anything. Um, you come with such a, like a much more grounded perspective. And like you mentioned, there's a bit of a transmission piece, which um, from my own experience, I've noticed where I jump into something before I actually experience it in my body, before I'm actually feeling it, I'm all over the place. My whole body is like vibrating and like, I'm probably going to cry or something. Cause I'm just so overwhelmed emotionally. I just love that you brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been something that I've really um, noticed around um how we kind of show up in relationships as well when we kind of get past this idea that um you know how we show up in our expression needs to look either this way or this way you know it's like this is the conscious way of doing relationships this is the conscious way of being in our sexuality and we move from this place of like um what if every part of me and my human experience is okay mm. and we kind of open from that place it kind of changes the game because we're no longer looking for a set of rules or behaviors in how we need to show up and we're actually being with the experience of our body and and something that i now experience after doing so much with this journey with this piece is um you know if somebody says something to me like if you ask me a question or if you, you know if i was with my partner we're having a fight or you know if i'm being interviewed whatever the piece is and someone asked me something in the past, what used to happen was that my brain would kick in and go, okay, you mm. need to say something. This is your cue now. You need to say something or you need to, you know, you need to be right to some degree. Like if I'm having a fight with my partner, it's this experience of, um, okay, I need to make sure that I can prove that I'm a good person or I'm the right person in this conversation. And now what happens is I have the experience of just like my body is the first thing that comes up. So the sensations, whatever you're sharing, the sensations start to be the first point of awareness inside of a, an argument with my partner or even a conversation with you or, you know, sharing anything. It's like what is going on inside of me becomes the, the, the leading compass. Mm. And then from there, I'm able to share whatever's true for me from that place. And that, that for me is when you kind of are working in that transmission space, you're in that embodied experience of sharing your truth because you're not focused on showing up or being a certain way for somebody else you're actually just being in the most authentic expression of your humanity in that moment mm, yeah that's super beautiful and I love that you touched on that too because I was actually going to ask you that because it came into my mind um the the body versus the mind piece so you're mentioning that it's it's something that you're feeling in your body first as opposed to discovering it through the mind first so I'd love for you to um if you can explain even how that like comes up for you in a conversation or in a difficult, um, conver difficult conversation, or even possibly in an arousing situation. Mm, yeah. Um, I, I like that you brought the arousing piece into it. Cause I think that that's a really important. Um, I have noticed that in society, we um, have these concepts that are of structures of relationships that need to show up in a certain way, i.e. like, um, you know, this is what monogamy is. And the, the, the journey of monogamy I've actually realized is monogamy looks very different and has many different sets of rules for different people. Mm -hmm. So by saying, this is what monogamy is and this is what non-monogamy is, is like a little bit hilarious that we make it that black and white. Because, you know, some people are like, if you flirt with somebody else, then you're breaking your monogamy, monogamous yeah. container. Or, you know, if you, um, you know, if you look at someone else or if you have desire to support someone else. And I feel like what I have come to realize is that like, um, what we experience inside and what we're feeling inside cannot be controlled. And if we try to repress it or shut it down, we're actually hurting ourselves. And in that same breath, you can still have agreements and you can still have, um, You can bring yourself to the conversation of opening and and exploring what that looks like. So um, we know as an example, it's just like if you're feeling your desire towards somebody else and you're in a monogamous relationship, 
Like, can you be okay that you're feeling that? That's like the first step. Mm. It's like, I am not a bad person because I'm in a monogamous relationship and I'm feeling this desire. Mm. 